Hello friends, I've received a few questions about drawing levels since last week's video where I covered the difference between the three level types and why you might use each one. And that's the biggest tip about levels that I can give you and that's to spend more time to understand the three different level types and why you'd use each one. So please do experiment and see which have the features that you need for your style of animation. But aside from that, today I thought I'd share my top five tips for working with levels, with a few more thrown in along the way. So my first tip is about creating levels. And you can create a level in OpenTunes just by starting to draw in an empty column like this. And it creates the first drawing in a new level of the default level type. And we'll see that default level type a little later. But I'd strongly recommend that you don't do this until you fully understand about level creation for three reasons. First, it won't necessarily create the right level type that you are after. And until you learn about the difference between the level types, you might not be getting the most out of the program. But if you do use the same type every time, this could be a useful way to work. Secondly, you'll get a default size for the level size. And for vector levels, this doesn't matter at all as they use an infinite canvas. And for the others, you can change the default size, which I'll show you shortly. But this isn't as efficient as changing it for each level as you create it. But also, as you draw, it'll use palette entry number one that you can't see until you draw. And this is initially set to the default brush and in black. So you can't use any of the cool raster brushes with your first stroke in this level. And if you've got a dark background, you won't even see your first line. So it'll likely be wrong anyway. So you'll end up deleting it every time. But with all that being said, for simplicity, I always recommend creating a level before you start drawing. And this removes all of the obstacles I've already talked about. Plus, it means you can create a new level either in its own column or in a column with another level in it. So to create a level in its own column, first select add exposed drawing on the timeline. Then you click on one of these three buttons above the timeline here. Then press OK and it'll create the first drawing of a new level in its own column. And if you're missing the toolbar at the top of the timeline here, you can just right click on a column header and choose toggle X sheet toolbar and then toggle it again to show or to hide it. So another way to create a level is to be in an empty cell in a column when you create a new level and then click one of the buttons, press OK. And this creates a new level in the same column. And to see that they're different levels, be sure to zoom out of the timeline and then you can see the name in the cell here. So I've created level C, drawing number one, previously levels B and A over there. And if you don't like using the toolbar, you can create a level from the level menu and just choose new level or choose the level type that you want to create. And then once the level's created, you can create a palette entry and choose a brush. Pick a color if you need to, set your options and start drawing. And do be sure to choose save all from the file menu to save your drawings and their place on the timeline. So I mentioned that when you create a level by just drawing, you can't set the level size. And you might want to do this if you want to create a wider drawing, for instance, maybe for a scrolling background, or if you're going to zoom in on a character, it's nice to have a large drawing so that it doesn't look blocky when you get closer. And you do this when you create a level. So again, it's a good habit to get into creating your levels with this dialog instead of just starting to draw. And in this dialog, you can change the level size so it could make it twice as wide, for instance. So you just simply click in the box and type the new size. Then when you press OK, this new level will be twice as wide, which you can see by the raster bounding box there. If I just draw inside it, you can see the size of the canvas, and now we can draw a wide background for our scene. And you probably noticed, but haven't yet looked into it, the other options in the new level dialog. And these allow you to create more than one starting drawing, which can be a real time saver. And I'd strongly recommend that you try those out. But do try them in a test project first, and don't forget, you can always hit undo after creating a level. And as I showed at the start, you can just start drawing in an empty column and you'll get a new level of the default type. 
And if you find that useful, you can choose which type it creates. Just open the preferences under the file menu and then from the drawing section, change the type in the default level type drop down, and I'll change it to a vector level here. And if I insert a blank column by selecting on the column header and pressing the insert key, and then click into the blank column and just start drawing. And I now get a level of the vector type that I've set as the default level type. So as you've seen, you can set up your level size each time you create a new level, which is good for unique level sizes, but you can also set a default initial size for each level. So head back to the preferences again. And still in the drawing section, you'll see the width and the height for new levels. And these only relate to raster and tunes raster levels though. Vector levels have an infinite canvas. So if I change this back to a tunes raster level, you can then edit the level size here. So if you fancy that you prefer having a little more room outside of the camera area, you could add a few hundred pixels to this size. So instead of 1920 for your default level, you could make it 2300. And for the height, let's add a couple of hundred on here as well to make it 1300. And then close that. And now you can draw a little larger than the camera every time. So let's create a new column again. Click into a cell in that blank column and just start drawing. And it creates a tombs raster level. And again, if you look at the white outline for the raster area, you can see that it's larger than the actual camera area. But if we go back to the preferences, you'll notice a couple more things. Firstly, there's this tick box I think you'll find really useful, especially if you create animations of different shapes and sizes. That's the new levels default to the current camera size. So let's take that. And when you create a new scene with a different camera size, any new levels you create will use that camera size. So this means you don't have to keep changing the default size here when you change from creating, say, widescreen HD animations to YouTube Shorts. It'll always create levels of the right size for the scene that you're working on. And next in these settings, you'll notice my size is shown in pixels, whereas yours might be shown in inches. But as I'm not printing out any of my animations on paper, having the size in inches just seems silly. So I changed OpenTunes to use pixels everywhere, so it's much easier to work with, and I don't have to consider DPI. And you do this from the interface section. Just change the unit and camera unit drop downs here to be both pixels. But using DPI can be important when importing images from other software. So when importing images into OpenTunes, sometimes an HD image created in another program doesn't fill the camera view of OpenTunes for an HD animation. So let's drag this image in here. And we just click and drag and drop and then choose to import to take a copy of that image into our project. And if it's the wrong size, you can use the animate tool to resize the image. Just choose the animate tool, choose scale from the options and then click and drag, moving it towards the center or away from the center until your image fits the screen. But a better way for dealing with imported images is to change one setting in the preferences. So again, go to File, Preferences, and then in the Loading section, just tick the option, use Camera DPI for all imported images. And then the next time you import an image, it should match your animation. So there's my top five tips for working with drawing levels. And if you want to see more of my top tips with OpenTunes, check out these videos just here. And as always, thanks again to my Patreon supporters for all of your ongoing support. I hope you're enjoying all of the additional benefits of being a supporter. And if you have any requests for extra content, just drop me a line. And I'll see you next time for another video. And that's a guarantee.